The highly anticipated part two for Rebel Moon dropped this week, and man, oh, what a film. Oh my goodness. I can't, I can't lie, this film was tough to watch. I didn't have many good things to say about part one, and I didn't have high expectations going into part two, but man, they should have been way lower because what we got here, it, it's not good. A lot of people are saying it's worse than part one. I would have to disagree just because this has a little bit more action than part one, which makes it a tad bit more manageable, a tad bit more viewable, but not, not a ton. But before we get into this film, quick spoiler warning, we will be talking spoilers ahead. So if you care about that, go ahead, click away, watch the film, and then come back. But if you're someone who just doesn't care about spoilers or has seen this thing already, I'm sorry, and let's jump into this thing. <laughs> Unlike Zack Snyder, I'm not going to draw out this plot summary. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it. The film picks up directly after the events of the first one. Evil Admiral Dude is back to life somehow. Somehow Palpatine returned. He's back, and he's out for revenge against the Scar Giver, uh, which is the main girl, whoever she is. Anyway, main girl and her ragtag team of misfits and strong warriors go back to the farm from the first part and try to help teach the farmers how to defend their territory, how to fight, in which all the farmers are just instantly good with weapons and all different forms of combat, so they don't spend too much time doing that. Majority of the time, uh, the first part of the film is slow-mo wheat farming. The first part of the film is just this farming. Why? <laughs> I can't tell you why. And why does it need to be slow-mo, Zach? Why? Why does this film need slow-mo farming? I, 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 I don't know. We even get a guy, I'm pretty sure, drinking water in slow motion. Why? Why do we need that? Why do you have to make this thing two hours? I think there's only like 60 minutes worth of actual content here. The rest is just slow motion. Anyway, they farm, they prepare big old empire attacks and gets their butts absolutely whooped by a bunch of farmers because... The Empire's really dumb and makes really dumb decisions throughout the battle. Anyway, main lady and her love interest sneak on to the big old battleship and end up blowing it up before the super weapon can destroy the farm. She kills bad Admiral Dude and they save the day. Whoopee, yay. Also, Robot has a pretty cool action sequence. That's, that's it. That's Rebel Moon. This film made part one seem completely unnecessary. And the reason I say that is one in part because there's a recap at the beginning of part two that goes over some of the events in the first part. I don't even remember all the things in the first part or the names of people in the first part. And so some of the summary is kind of lost on you because you don't remember any of the names, locations from the first part. But it summarizes everything you need to know. You don't need to watch the two hour and 30 minute or however long first part because they give you all the information you need there. Part two doesn't add anything from part one. You can completely skip part one and not miss a single thing in part two. Part one is completely pointless, and I don't think anyone, especially after part two, is gonna go back and watch that. Because why, why would you? Why would you waste two hours on something that does absolutely nothing? And the characters aren't expanded upon in part two. So there's no reason to go back to part one. You're not learning anything. You're not more attached to the characters because you watch part one and part two. I felt the same way about the characters throughout the five hours I spent with them, which is an insanely long amount of time to spend with characters and feel absolutely nothing for them. And I think that's the biggest problem with Rebel Moon, besides the slow-mo, besides the poor dialogue, and besides the horrible screenplay, it's the characters. You do not give a crap about any of these characters, and so there's no stakes. If the villains won in this movie, it would not change how I viewed this movie because I do not care about the main characters. There is nothing there to make you care for them and they try in the most lazy way to get you to feel something for these characters, but it just comes across as lazy. There is a whole 10, 15 minute sequence of the characters just going through different flashbacks 
of the exact same backstory, just with the different characters. I'm from a lowly village. Then the Empire came and wiped us out. Now I'm out for revenge. Oh no, really? Me too. It's like, why, why are we spending 10, 15 minutes on this? When you had a whole other movie before this film to develop characters and you didn't. I truly believe that if you combine like 10 minutes from part one into part two, you would have the complete story. You could literally start with the main girl leaving and then a quick montage of her gathering all these different guys and then going back to the farm and that's it. There's the first movie. You don't have to fake kill off the Admiral. You don't have to introduce this rebellion that doesn't really do anything. Like part one just feels so pointless with part two. This could have been one thing. This could have been one movie. Why did we need five hours of this? And I guess we need even more because there's going to be director cuts coming out, which adds even more stuff to this. It's like, why? Why did we need to do this? Why? And because I couldn't care less about the main characters, when two of them die in the film, I, I'm just like, oh, I guess we won't see that person anymore. <sighs> it's just really bad character development. And if you can't care about the characters in the story... It's kind of tough to care about the story. It's kind of tough to care about the movie. I'd say the only exception to that is if the visuals and the action pick up. Pick up, put the story on its back. In this film, the action just doesn't do it. I will admit, there are a couple scenes and there are a couple sequences that I was like, that was pretty cool. But for the most part, it's just not that interesting. It's not that special. It doesn't do anything unique. It's just your typical sci-fi big old action sequence. I will say, alongside for a couple action sequences, I think visually this film, like the CGI and certain things, is pretty good. I think for the visuals, the thing that I dislike most about it is just the visual style, and that's all stylistic choice, so I'm not really going to hold that against the film. I wasn't a huge fan of how it looked, like how it dark it was and just orange and brown like I wasn't a huge fan of the color grading or anything like that and I wasn't a huge fan of the tone that color grading set but you know the stylistic choices like that I can usually just brush aside you know whatever but to add that on top of subpar action and really bad story and horrible character development it just it's just icing on the cake and leaves you wondering, what does this film have going for it? And I would say the world it creates. I'm going to be honest. The world of Rebel Moon is kind of interesting. The flashback sequences with the main girl to her Empire days and everything with the royal family and all that stuff going on. With the exception of the assassination flashback. What was that? <laughs> what was that? The main villain bringing in his own orchestra during the assassination attempt <laughs> what was that? that had to be one of the goofiest like meant to be serious moments i've seen in a while besides for that i think the stuff going on in the background is way more interesting than what's in the foreground what's the main part of the story and i think that's another problem with rebel moon i think the world itself is interesting and has a lot of potential but the story they choose to tell is not interesting Look, Zack Snyder has some good ideas. He's unique. He's interesting. And that's something I like about him is that he knows that his films, not everyone's going to like that. And he's okay with that. And I really appreciate that about him. But man, you got to have some people in your room keeping you accountable, helping you stay the course, making corrections, speaking into what you're creating. Zack Snyder needs someone to rein him back on things like this. He needs someone to help him in the writer's room. And I don't mean this in a hateful way at all. I think stuff like this has potential. You, you need better people surrounding you. And you need people to surround you to help you succeed. Look, Rebel Moon Part 2 is just a big old mess. It's way longer than it needs to be. The, the action is decent at best. The characters are not interesting and very poorly developed. The world could be interesting, but the movies focus on the wrong areas of it and yeah, it just leads to this mess of a film, mess of two films that I don't think I view myself recommending to anyone. Watch it if you want to, but if you were to ask me, I'd say save your time. Go watch Dune. Go watch Star Wars. Go watch some other sci-fi movie. That's not this. But yeah, 
That's what I think about Rebel Moon Part 2. But let me know down in the comment section below what you guys thought about the movie. I appreciate you guys stopping by, watching the video. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate you guys. And as always, I love y'all. And until next time, peace out, bro skillets. Wow.